Welcome back to my class and before we start for those of you who have not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe it so that you do not miss any video that I upload so right away now let us start our lesson for today let us start with a brief recap of what we have done in the last video. Griffin ran away or escaped from London and he arrived at Ipin and he booked two rooms for himself in an inn and stayed there paying his rent and we come across that Mrs. Hall, the landlord's wife of that inn, was trying to make friends with him but he did not give a chance to to make friends so this is how mrs hall thought that he was an eccentric person his personality itself was strange okay now as we move on we will find in the story that griffin reveals his lack of money he is wanting money right now and he had to pay his rent also so for that he pretended that he is expecting a check uh, sooner or later and if it comes he would be able to pay the rent okay so that's what happened here strange enough uh, shortly after griffin revealed his um, lack of money his wanting money an incident happened in ip so the incident is like this. It is mentioned in the book as a curious episode, okay? So what kind of curious episode is it? Let us see. Very early in the morning, a clergyman and his wife were awakened. Probably that clergyman was the, uh, the priest of the church in Iping. So something happened there as the clergyman heard some noise coming out of his study hall you know he woke up and creeping downstairs they again heard the chink of the money you know when you take a coin and just draw it on the hard surface of your table the kind of metallic sound that the coin produces metal and wood sound that it produces that's what it says the chink of the money being taken from the clergyman's desk and if two coins are hitting each other the kind of metallic sound that you can hear that is what it means okay the clergyman without making any noise took a poker poker means a stick okay pointed stick it's a pen here but <laughs> you imagine this is a stick okay a poker uh, grabs firmly in his hand and then he suddenly flung open the door of the study of the study hall and then he said by just taking the poker straight said surrender <laughs> but then to his surprise he realized that the room was empty he did not find anybody inside the room that's the best part of the story okay so and then what they did he and his wife looked under the desk they went behind the curtains to see if he was hiding behind that and even they looked up the chimney hole you know chimney uh, in cold places like england a fireplace is built inside the room attached to a wall and since the fire is being burned here if you burn fire inside your room you will not be able to sit inside the room because of the smoke okay so for that reason we all know that smoke goes up it always takes an upward direction so if you attach a pipe above the fireplace that smoke is going to be emitted outside because it moves up the smoke will be sucked outside and it will just blow outside of the chimney so they thought maybe the thief is hiding there in inside the chimney hole so they tried to find there also but there was none and then when he checked everything nicely he found that the housekeeping money was missing 
Probably he also let his house for strangers to stay and he would earn money. So that money that he earned from housekeeping was missing, all right? And then this particular incident of robbery quickly spread around Iping, okay? It quickly spread around Iping. And then people talked about it a lot. Even the clergyman himself said, extraordinary affair he kept on saying extraordinary affair extraordinary affair throughout the day probably okay and so this is what happened all right but then this is not the end of his adventure i mean the adventure that griffin is facing in his life okay you will find it here but it was not as extraordinary as the behavior of mrs hall's furniture a little later that morning again that same morning an incident happened which we can consider that it is by far more extraordinary affair than what has happened in the clergyman's house all right so what kind of extraordinary incident took place there introducing us to mrs hall's furniture what happened to the furniture let's see okay that morning early in the morning the landlord and his wife were awake okay they were up early and uh, they were surprised to see that the scientist's door that means the room where the scientist uh, stayed the door of that room was actually wide open and that is unusual because the scientist always keeps his door closed shut he allows none to enter in his room okay so they thought of taking some chance to peep inside what is going on okay they thought of having a peep that means to secretly look into the room to see what was going on all right they thought of investigating it and then when they went near the door and peeped around the door they tried to see inside they did not see anybody that's interesting so immediately they went inside and then they thought of finding some evidences what what was going on inside the room and cunningly mrs hall touched the bed okay touched the bed you know cold days when you just wake up from the bed your bed will be warm but when you were awake for a long time and away from the bed for a long time, your bed will get cold. That's it. Okay. Nothing so interesting about it. But she found out that it was cold. Okay. And then she thought the scientist must have been awake for some time now. And the bandages that could be seen on his face, everything, his hat, okay, everything was all lying here and there inside the room. All right, it was not kept in one place. The head was kept on the bed post and the rest of the things were just lying here and there in the room. All of a sudden, something happened. Somebody stood at the back of Mrs. Hall and was sniffing, <laughs> doing like that, okay? It's funny. So, sniffing uh, just in front of her ear. So, when she turned, she did not see anybody. What scary situation it is. Then, something happened you know a moment later the hat on the bedpost leaped up and dashed itself into her face then so magically you know the hat that was lying on the on the bedpost simply lift up in the air it got lifted up in the air okay no one was touching it it's magical Simply it went up in the air and then it dashed to the face of Mrs. Hall. All right, so that's what happened. So she was uh, taken aback by surprise. She was scared, okay, at this moment. Then what happened? The most interesting thing here is then the bedroom chair became alive. Springing into the air, it charged straight at her legs foremost watch the video I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you uh, an idea how it happened okay so it says 
straight at her legs foremost. When the chair lifted itself in the air, the legs of the chair were facing towards Mrs. Ho. Okay, here it is. Alright, did you enjoy that illustration? Okay, fine. So now we have already seen that the chair dashed both of them, Mr. Mr. Hall and Mrs. Hall, out of the room and the door closed. Okay, then what happened? Mrs. Hall almost fell down the stairs in hysterics. Hysterics means ah, some kind of crazy feeling, okay? You don't know in what position of your mental well-being you are in. You don't really understand that. It's a serious, serious situation. You find the meaning of the word hysteric or hysteria in, in the dictionary. You will find that. Somebody almost out of mind, almost going mad, okay? Crying or shouting some kind of mysterious show. So uh, she almost fell down while they were dashed out of the room and was coming down the stairs. She almost fell down in hysterics, okay? She was convinced that somehow the spirits were involved in making the chair go alive, okay? That's how it is. They did not know that Griffin was the mystery behind such kind of happenings, okay? Because they did not know Griffin was invisible, all right? Okay, she thought the chair is somehow haunted by spirits. And then something interesting thing you will find here. My poor mother used to sit in that chair. She moaned. She cried throughout the day, saying that my poor mother used to sit in the chair. And the chair is the memory of my mother. Why are the spirits taking over this chair and putting spirits into that and dashing me out of the room? This is what she was so surprised with. She thought like this, to think it should rise up against me now. I can't think of the situation how this chair used by my mother, you know, is turning against me. How is it turning against me? That's what she could not understand, all right? That's what she kept on saying throughout the day, moaning, crying, sobbing, okay? So the trouble, a lot, okay? The feeling among the neighbors was that the trouble was caused by witchcraft. They thought this kind of trouble that is going on around Iping is actually caused by witchcraft. You know witchcraft? But witchcraft or not, when news of burglary at the clergyman's home became known, the strange scientist was strongly suspected of having had a hand in it. But then, the news about the robbery that has happened in the clergyman's house this morning, early morning, when this news spread, they thought, they suspected that this eccentric scientist must have some kind of hand behind this robbery, okay? So they thought like that. And, you know, somebody, somebody informed the police, the constable, okay? But before the police arrives in the scene that day, when he came down, that means when Mr. Griffin came down out of his room and paid the rent to Mrs. Hall, this suspicion grew even stronger, okay? Interestingly, although he had admitted some time ago that he did not have any more ready cash, how is it possible that suddenly, okay, suddenly, that he produces ready cash and pay it to Mrs. Hall. That's the suspicion. So the village constable was secretly sent for. He was informed. He's on his way. And then instead of waiting for the constable, Mrs. Hall demanded to Griffin that what are all these things going on with them? Okay. And so Griffin, we know he was a lawless person and quick to anger. We have to say short temper, hot temper, whatever you would like to say. I told you in the beginning that he was a lawless person. He was angry with his landlord. He, he set fire to his house. That's it. And now here, when Mrs. Hall demanded about what is going on right now, about the situation in Iping, okay? So he was quick enough to get angry and he was angry. And angrily, you know, he said like this, you don't understand who or what I am. He shouted, Griffin shouted like this, very well. I'll show you, he said, I'll show you, I'll show who I am, what I am, you know. He 
We said like that and then suddenly he threw off bandages. He threw off the bandages that he kept um, wearing. He kept bandaging around his head, his forehead, hiding it. He threw off the whiskers, the muffler, okay? And uh, spectacles also, the dark glasses he kept wearing. And even his false nose. When he threw all of it, what happened is that the man looked without a head. You can see only his body, but not the head. And just as he did like that, the constable arrived. The police came and saw that the man he was supposed to arrest is a man without head. But then, funnily enough, you know, the constable was not restricted by such kind of view, such kind of sight. He was a man determined to do or to carry out what he has been ordered, all right? So it says, Mr. Zephyrs, the constable now arrived and was quite surprised to find that he had to arrest a man without a head. Look at this. But Zephyrs was not easily prevented from doing his duty. If a magistrate weren't ordered a person's arrest, then that person had to be arrested with or without his head. So Jeffers was determined to arrest that person. So after that, a remarkable scene follows. You know, the police came near and tried to get hold of the man who was becoming more and more invisible as he took off his shirt and threw it away. You know, Jeffers found struggling himself with someone who he could not see, okay? So that's the situation. And some people tried to help him. But then, surprisingly, they got blows from nowhere. When when Griffin was punching somebody in the face, they could not see from where that blow was coming. They only felt the hitting and, you know, <laughs> interestingly, found themselves hit by blows that seemed to come from nowhere. All right? And in the end, Jeffers was knocked unconscious. I don't know where the scientist hit him, but he became unconscious for some time, okay? When he attempted to hold on the unseen scientist. So there were nervous, excited cries saying, hold him, hold him. But then this was easier said than done. You can say, hold him, hold him. But when you can't see that person whom you are supposed to hold, how is it possible? So that words are more said than done okay so griffin had shaken himself free but then we know of course he was again pushed to his limits he had to again become a wanderer without clothes without food sort of thing so what we actually find from this story is as we sum up it's a long video today but i'm going to finish it as we sum up we find that this man who was trying to make human body invisible, although he accidentally found that drug to make the human body invisible and he became invisible. And in the quest of doing that, he committed a lot of crimes. Even, even he killed people, he murdered, that's what it is, okay? So what we understand is when we have such kind of strong determination and we carry out experiments and become successful, we should not use that for our own advantage to the disadvantage of others, okay? That's what we learn from this particular thing. And if you like to know more about H.G. Wells, a great personality, he was the inventor of science fiction novels in English. Great salute to him. We like to enjoy science fiction. So with this, I would like to close this discussion of this particular lesson, The Footprints Without Feet. Thank you. Thank you for watching.